Today, we're taking a look at some of the best strategies to get you through Honor Mode in Baldur's Gate 3. Let's get to it. The new Honor Mode in Baldur's Gate 3 ups the difficulty, adding new boss mechanics and more, creating some very interesting challenges. So I thought I would toss together this tips video to help some of you out who may be struggling getting through Honor Mode. Let's start off with talking about builds. When it comes to builds, you want to make sure that you are using builds that are extremely durable or absolutely broken. Two good examples of broken builds are guides that I have done in the past. I will link those down below so you can get the full guides to them are the Fog Cloud build and the Darkness build or a Darkness Warlock build. Both of these build styles take advantage of staying hidden while it is the enemy's turn, completely shutting down the AI. It will just skip its turn and you can attack, they skip, you attack, rinse and repeat. On top of that, these builds come online relatively early and then just continue to ramp up and get better and better and even more broken as the game progresses. Another good idea is to have a really, really good support slash healer build. Once again, I will link to one of those that I have developed down in the description if you would like to check that out. And the reason is obviously for healing purposes. Even if it's a situation where you are running multiple fog cloud and darkness builds, you still want to ensure that you have a healer and buffer build. And that is because mistakes happen and one bad mistake or even a tiny mistake can go bad really really quickly in this game and it's good to just have a healer unit in order to grab control of the situation again so even if it's a case where 99% of the time that healer is just hanging out doing nothing skipping its turn in a fog cloud you still want to ensure that you have one and speaking of a healer that leads me to sanctuary is your friend the more builds that you can have that have this ability the better. You can literally walk away from a fight if you have Sanctuary. This spell is undoubtedly one of the strongest spells in the game. Now, obviously, you can be attacked indirectly, but most of the time, the AI will not try to attack you indirectly. And there have been situations where I have cast Sanctuary on my entire party and walked away from a fight. Well, not walked, dashed away from a fight, but you get the idea. Not to mention, this is just an excellent excellent spell to have for if things start to get a little out of hand. It gives you 10 turns to get the situation back under control. The next tip I have for you is to do anything and everything you can possibly do to reduce damage. Obviously, you want to try to not take damage, but at some point you are going to inevitably take some amount of damage. So you want to do everything you can to ensure that when you do take damage that it is reduced as much as possible. And there are a few things that you can do to ensure that this happens. For one, Warding Bond is an excellent option to reduce all incoming damage. Also, Wild Heart Barbarian with the Bear Heart while raging reduces all damage except for psychic damage. Force Conduit is another fantastic option as well as the Wizard's Arcane Ward ability. There are also multiple armors in the game that reduce damage as well. Any amount of damage reduction is better than none. The next tip is just avoid fights if you can avoid fights. I'm going to keep this spoiler free as possible so I won't be mentioning any exact fights, but there are plenty of fights in the game that you don't have to do. You can just skip them and they are big boss fights that got new legendary abilities. There is no need to put yourself at risk if that fight is not going to do anything for you. Sure, it's going to give you experience and that's something we're going to talk about here in a minute, but there are other ways to get experience that don't involve a big fight with a difficult boss. So if you can talk your way out of a fight, do so. If there is a fight that you can just avoid and you don't necessarily need the experience to level or what have you, avoid the fight. The less you put yourself in danger, the less chance you have of a total party wipe. But that does lead me to the next tip, which is something that you do need to consider, and that is taking the time to level and gear properly. You don't want to rush through the game too fast because you can end up in a situation where you are under leveled. So it it is important to take your time and do as much stuff as you can do without putting yourself in danger before you start doing the things that you need to do in order to continue to level that do put you in danger. Ensuring that you are properly geared and properly leveled is probably one of the most important things you can do, aside from choosing a good build that is going to get you through the game and not get owned. And that leads me into when you do fight, you not only want to ensure that you take as least amount of damage as possible, you also want to ensure you are doing the greatest amount of 
damage as possible. And that means to dip your weapon and buff as much as possible. If you can dip it, dip it. If you can take a buff, take a buff. One really easy way to ensure that you always have a constant source of increased damage is to just carry a candle with you. It costs you no action points to drop the candle on the ground and light it, and then you dip your weapon in it, which costs you a bonus action. This still leaves you free to do a action. It may not seem like a lot of damage at first, but if every one of your characters who is attacking with a weapon does this, it's going to start to add up very quickly. You also want to ensure that you're maximizing your action economy, and this means through buffs. One of the best buffs you can do is blessing everybody who is attacking to ensure that they miss less. Every time you miss, the enemy gets a chance to hit you without a equal exchange in damage or an exchange in damage in your favor. You want to do your best to ensure that when damage is being exchanged, it's either being exchanged equally, so you're both hitting each other, or you're hitting and they're missing, preferably. And last but not least, just leave one of your party members at camp. If you have two really OP builds, I mean absolutely broken builds, like Fog Cloud or Darkness Sorlock, and a healer, you can easily leave your fourth person back at camp and just leave them there all the time. You can't total party wipe if one person is chilling in camp. And then you can just walk over to Withers and resurrect your entire party. And if you have a thief, the gold amount that it costs you to res your party is not a big deal because you can just steal it back from Withers. You can also just use Withers to allow the party member to be dead and then just replace them with new people. This is fantastic if you are using hirelings because you can just let him have his hirelings back and get new hirelings or get those old hirelings back. All right, and that is going to wrap it up for this one. If you found this video helpful and informational, please consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other videos. And if you're looking for some more Baldur's Gate 3 content, you can find a link to another one of my videos on the screen right now. I want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters for helping to keep these videos a sponsor free. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to become an official channel supporter, check out the links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.